Hey there friends, you got your buddy Bill here in the shop today with a really special project. Our friends over at Film Riot reached out, they're making a short film, they wanted some props. We've done some work with them in the past, go check out Proximity, I made the ankle cuffs for those, uh, and a handful of other stuff. We love those guys, can't wait to do more projects with them. So I jumped at the chance to make some props. Uh, the first thing I made was this little drone they want for the scene. I made a video over on our extra credit channel uh, if you wanna see that build. If you're already a member, you can jump over there and watch that. If you're not a member, it's a great reason to join. We also have a bunch of other behind the scenes vlogs every week and other shop projects. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel and everything that we do here, we appreciate it. You get a whole bunch of extra videos. Uh, so that's the drone thing, you can go check that out. But today, I need to build the main prop, it's a space gun. I made a rifle for a uh, film ride a while back for one of the other short films. Uh, all out of foam, all scratch built, but today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do some kit bashing, which is great, because I've been hoarding toys. A lot of toys. <laughs> Whenever we go to secondhand stores, I always rummage through, uh, because who wouldn't want this little purple squirt gun rifle, or this wacky laser tag thing, or part of an old toilet. Uh, so I'm gonna rustle through here, see if we can find some parts that'll form the base for our prop, and then maybe some other add-ons too. A laser sight, does this still work? Needs a battery, but who doesn't want a laser sight? Uh, this, this is probably what we're gonna use. We bought this years ago and it's got all sorts of cool stuff. I like that one a lot. Uh, this, I really like these as well. That's a maybe. Uh, let's see, we have a, a, a paintball barrel. Uh, part of a lightsaber. That, this kind of looks like a scope to me. I could see that being turned into a scope. What else do we have here? Oh, this is like a toy spy kit thing. Um, that might be good for the scope. Uh, ah, uh, Dan, if you're watching, this was from you. Of course, my buddy Dan loves all things giant silencers. I might use that as well. All right, we've got uh, several dead uh, heat guns in here. Uh, let's see, ooh, actually, there's another scope. That looks pretty good. It's got some interesting bits on it. Like this stock, does that extend? No, that's just the way it is, that's fine. Here's what I've come up with for sort of the basic shape of everything. We've got a stock here, we've got our gun, we've got the longer barrel looking thing there, and then this will get turned into a scope. We're gonna lose the lightsaber blade on this. Uh, I also have a bunch of other just greebles and stuff. This is things I've refused to throw away. Uh, these are all castings of knobs and assorted things that we can add for a little bit of interest and visual contrast. Uh, so I'll go through, I think I'm gonna start putting the base of this thing together, but I'll go through all this stuff and find more and more interesting things to add. First thing I wanna do is uh, find out what this thing does. It has batteries and I presume lights and stuff. Uh, these are probably dead. We'll put some freshies in there and we'll give it a try. All right, on. There's a light in there, that's good. Uh, there's a blinking light in there, that seems to be all it does. Okay, we're not gonna worry about any of that functionality. We're just gonna make it look good. Uh, there won't be any lights or anything. I was hoping that it would do stuff all on its own, but that is not the case. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna rescue these batteries though. When I get the sticker off, you can see I got it at Goodwill for $1.99, what a steal. Uh, if you have to remove stickers from stuff, your heat gun is gonna be your best option to loosen up that uh, adhesive and get it all off in one go. Ready, all in one go. Come on, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, no. Some of these labels, why is, there, why is it split there? Did they make, did they do that on purpose to make it a Pain in the ass to get off. Yeah, they do that. So you can't transfer the sticker to something else. Ah, oh, this is, what, ugh, ugh. All right, well, Goo Gone will take care of the rest of that. 
There we go. Of course, now I have to use something else to clean the goo gone off because paint will <laughs> definitely not like that. So let's use some alcohol to clean that off. There we go. This will all get sanded before paint anyway. Oh, this also has this thing, this uh, container back here and a QR code. I don't know what that's for. I don't know what any of that's for. It's for snacks. Yes, we'll put some snacks in there. It'd be pretty funny if I left some food in there for Ryan to discover. Okay, I have a pretty good plan. It's time to do some modification. I'm gonna hack this off and hack this thing off over the bandsaw. Very precise method for removing this. <laughs> it's loose, yeah, it all came out. So pretty. Okay, that looks great. I love this, that's almost done as a scope. Uh, but now that I'm looking at this, I remember that I should probably sand off the warning labels and text. I think there's some down here I can get rid of. Uh, but also I wanna fill in these screw holes and I've got some body filler, uh, Bondo, or this stuff, Evercoat makes really good body filler. We'll mix it up and fill those up. That's probably plenty. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, a trick I learned from my buddy Evil Ted is to use a piping bag to Push it in the screw holes there. So I'm gonna feed all this down into the end of this thing. Let's cut a little hole in the end of that. There we go, we can pipe it right in there. Like frosting. Yeah. That way you don't have a bubble in the bottom. It's also really fast, which is great. Just a couple minutes later, and this is already green, it's starting to set up. Uh, I like to trim off most of the extra so I don't have to sand all of that down. Uh, and then we'll let this cure a while longer. Uh, by the way, if you like these knives, they're available at punishprops.com. I use them every day. Get rid of you. This is a neat little part of the contraption, but I'm gonna get rid of it. I need the stock to attach there. So I'm gonna glue this closed, uh, probably with some epoxy. And I'm just roughing up the surfaces with some 100 grit here so it's got some tooth. This is my five minute epoxy. I use this stuff all the time because five minutes is just long enough for me to glue something up and then go have a snack. A generous amount of glue. There's a little bit of a gap there to fill. Might as well put some down here, some on there, and this part here is a hinge that we're not gonna use anymore and it's kind of unsightly. So I've been pawing through my stuff over here and I found something very exciting. This is a greeble from my handsome jack mask that I made like nine years ago uh, that was in the sculpt and then I retrieved it. And I think we can make that fit right in there. Just have to do a little modification. Turns out it wasn't the handsome jack mask. It was this mask that I made with our buddy Nick over at Modulus Props. Uh, it was part of the sculpt right in there. So it's only like three years old. It's still perfect though, I'm totally using it. Okay, it fits. And I think what I wanna do is remove everything up above here. This fits great. I really like how that looks. So I'm just gonna sand it a little bit. And we're just gonna super glue this in place. 
There we go, and I have a little of this kicker. There. That is starting to come together. Uh, we can probably sand these now. With this filling, we want to just sand it down to flush with the surface. Actually, that where'd that 100 grit go? So we'll just sand it until there's a little circle left. Then I'm going to finish it up with this 220 and then 400 so that it looks nice and smooth again. And I'll just repeat that for the rest of them. Looking pretty good there. While I'm at it, I'm going to sand the text off of here. After fixing up the holes here, I'm sanding everything with 220 just to kind of bring everything to the same level. Then I thought, I like the shiny kind of transparent thing here. So, got some masking tape here and I'm masking that off so it won't get any sand scuffing on it. But also when it comes time to paint, we'll leave that right on there and it won't get any paint. There we go. Everything got sanded with 220 and then I'm just using the scotch right pad to sort of buff everything. Uh, this is gonna be super helpful to get the paint to stick later. I'm really happy with how this is going. I think it's time to start sticking things on. Uh, let's start with this thing. I have some stuff uh, that I'm gonna glue together, starting with this all thread. If I glue it in here, that can go on there. And then that can go on there, kind of like that. Actually, it's done. <laughs> First we drill a hole for the all thread and I have this step bit so that I don't mangle the thin plastic. Make sure it's going in straight. A little bigger. Yep. Okay, we'll get a, a longer bit to extend that. But that's a nice clean hole there. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, so twist, twist bits, that's what they do. That's why that step drill bit was so nice. just like I planned it. <laughs> uh, that's gonna get hot glued in. We can get rid of some of the shaky bits. Now we just put a lot of hot glue in there. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> and we're just gonna try and get as much in and around it as we can. This will all get covered. Mostly straight. Did a little cut on the bandsaw here so that that matches nicely. I like that. Uh, then to attach this, this is gonna be super simple. I'm gonna wrap this in tape until it's just snug on here. Then we're gonna hot glue the whole thing. You would be surprised to find out how many really cool Hollywood props from very big movies are held together with hot glue. Too much. There we go. That's really snug. And we'll hot glue that and finish it off. And there. And for good measure, we'll put some down in the other end, just to make sure in case I have to fix this, I can't get it apart. All right, more of the same here, tape to match this inner diameter and it's nice and snug. So now, more hot glue. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Ugh. 
Looks good. <laughs> that started to cool really fast. So that's like this. Ha, 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 with a scope. Like that. Oh, that's pretty good. Well. <laughs> Up next is our extended barrel here, and I've got this aluminum uh, tube that should work well to connect this to that, but it doesn't quite fit all the way in there. So we're gonna make that a little bigger. This is like the hardest plastic on earth. What's going on here? Uh, turns out this part was sticking to the end of the drill bit and then just spinning in there and melting. Just some extra pieces. There we go. Uh, okay, so that's <laughs> gonna go over there now. Uh, this is now way too small. So maybe I'll get some PVC pipe for that. New tube, new plan. This tube fits right in there. We'll glue that in and then we'll make a corresponding hole on this fella. Glue that in. Off with your head. Gonna have to remove that. There's, a, there's some screws in there that are in, interfering, but for this switch, we'll get rid of those. Things are looking pretty good here. That's gonna fit in there. That's gonna fit on there. Fantastic. Uh, for the adhesion, let's go with a five minute epoxy. I also had to shake this a lot to get all the, the debris out. There's still a loose wire in there, but that's, that's just gonna be like that. <laughs> I couldn't find where it was. Put some down in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You know what? I'm going to put more down here. A little squeeze out. Okay, now we wait. Looking good, feeling good. Time for the last major element here, our scope. And Britt found this, it's an old, it's actually made for holding a scope on like a BB gun, uh, but we're gonna use it a little differently. Uh, I'm gonna screw this on right there. And right there, and I'm gonna drill and tap those so we can screw it in. Let's just tap it. This should thread in there. Perfect. This is a M3 screw, hex head. Okay, everyone knows that sci-fi, everything sci-fi has hexagons. And why hexagons, Brit? Because they're the best of guns. That's right. Not too tight, it's gonna be super easy to strip that plastic. But that, that feels good. These are M4s, a little more stout. Less likely to strip in the plastic. Oh yeah. That looks friggin' cool. Cool. Couple more details and then we can start painting. Got some little knobs that I've cast from various things. So I'm gonna glue them on these these bits right here, and we'll just super glue those on. I like this one for this side. Hit it with a little accelerator, so that right when it touches down, it will kick. Very nice. 
This one, not a button. Lies. There we go. That's just where that wants to be. Want something that connects the stock to the gun a little better. So I'm gonna cut out a couple of little strips of styrene and glue and screw them in place. And that'll add a little more detail and also shore up this dubious connection. <laughs> I'm gonna drill the holes first. The screw holes. It's way easier to do this now while I can hold the whole piece. Now we'll cut it out. I'm also gonna cut these lengthwise. I'll snap these, but getting these cuts in now, again, before it's a tiny little piece of plastic. So we can do this, and then we can do this, and then I can do, uh, uh, I'll get some pliers. Like that. And I'll get some sandpaper and just sort of smooth up the edges a bit, maybe around the corners a tiny bit too. All right, that'll go right there. I'm gonna screw it in, but we'll tack it down with glue first. Hit the area with a little juice. There we go. Oh, there's a uh, piece of all thread in there. I actually didn't even tap these holes. I can you can just thread the screw right into the plastic. Oh, I like that. That looks nice. I am pretty pleased with where we are right now, and I wanna hit it with some paint so we can see how it's coming together. Uh, I've got some alcohol here just to wipe it down. Clean off the remaining dust. Get rid of your greasy finger uh, oils and stuff, just so the paint really sticks. For the paint, we've got this ultra flat camel paint that Ky Krylon sells. It sticks to plastic really well, and it dries super fast. Which are two features that I Appreciate. I gave it a couple of coats of that flat black spray paint and let it dry overnight and it's looking really, really good. Uh, next thing to figure out is the rest of the colors on this, the whole paint scheme. So I took a photo of this, threw it in Photoshop and whipped up a couple of ideas, sent them over to Ryan so that he could pick which one he liked. I gave him three options. There's a lighter one with some nice colors. There's this darker one and a blue one. I do like blue. Uh, he ended up liking this one a whole bunch, which is great because we already have the base color all done. <laughs> Next thing is just a little masking so we can do the red paint. Got my reference over there so I know where my stuff's going. I'm masking off the black and leaving the parts I want to turn red. Uh, I've masked off the end there, but there's a couple of lines I want to cut in. So I'm just going to draw those. Now I'm cutting into the plastic a little bit, but it's not really a big deal. The, uh, the paint will go right up to that line. There we go. Next is these three stripes on the grip here. So I'm just going to fully cover them in tape and then cut them out. And I can go in and sort of outline them with my thumbnail here. Got the back of the scope masked off and then I had to trim around this one, but I got the front masked off as well. It's a little more complicated. There we go. Uh, now I'm just gonna cover up everything that I don't want to get paint on. I'll do some of that with just tape. And I have this thing, which is a really awesome tool. It puts the tape right on the edge there and I can just stick that down and then this covers everything else. The 
This is how I wrap all my presents. My family's very confused. Looks like we're good to go. Next is just a little bit of spray paint, this red. I like this stuff because it dries really fast. Now the fun part, we get to unwrap our present. It's, oh, I wanted a Super Nintendo. <laughs> well, oh, there we go. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks good. Cool, I dig it. I designed some decals to go on here and I cut them out on my vinyl cutter. Uh, if you don't have a vinyl cutter, but you do have a 3D printer, you can actually make stencils with a 3D printer too. You could also cut this out by hand out of a piece of tape, which I have done many, many times. I'm just gonna mask around this. Uh, I don't have to do the whole thing again, but just enough to keep the uh, overspray from getting on different parts, and then we'll come in with the airbrush to paint it. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, oh, there it goes. <laughs> All in one piece. Yeah. And finally take this masking tape off. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Now I was pretty particular about the text. If you can figure out what that's for, let me know down in the comments. One of the last additions will be the lenses here and I've got some acrylic plastic. This is a smoked acrylic. It should look really cool. And I've got a slightly bigger circle and a slightly smaller circle. Let's go cut it out. lens. I glued in a couple little chunks of styrene so that the uh, lens can't go in too far. And then I mix up some epoxy here to hold it in place. Look at that. Pretty slick. This one's really snug. We don't need a ton of glue. Yeah, that looks, that looks awesome. <laughs> It's time for weathering. I've got my water mixable oil paints. I love these for weathering, especially mechanical stuff. It looks all greasy. This is already pretty black, so I'm gonna use a lot of this brown so it shows up well. And we're just gonna cover everything. Mmm. That looks like what I almost stepped in on our walk this morning. Seriously, people, pick up your dog poop. It's the poop apocalypse out there. All right, let's make a mess. Okay, I love this stuff. It takes so long to dry. You have a ton of working time. And it smears really well. It's so greasy. Yeah. I want to use some of this yellow ochre because it's just the black and the brown are too dark. They're not showing up. Why won't you open? Ugh, you know what? Ugh! Oh, there we go. Hmm. There we go, that'll, that'll show up better. It doesn't have to go everywhere either. You can just get a little bit here, a little bit there. Down in the crevices especially though, is where you're really where you wanna focus. Now when we wipe that off, we'll get a little more contrast. Yeah, now we're talking. Cool, let's do that everywhere.
I think our uh, blaster here is looking sufficiently dirty, but now it's time to do some of the highlights, some of the scuffing. I've got rub and buff here. I figure all of the dark parts, um, I'll do like some soft edge weathering on that, and then the painted parts, I might get a brush and do some chipping. Uh, but let's do the butt rub and buff first. Well, I got a lot on there. And I just, I wanna be careful. I don't wanna to put too much, it's impossible to take it off. So I'm just gonna gently massage that over the texture. And just pay a lot of attention to the corners of things. Now we're talking. I love how that turned out. I was trying to be subtle with it. It's so easy to go overboard with that rub and buff. Uh, now on the red parts here, my thought is that's red paint that could chip off back down to the metal. So I'm gonna use just some Tamiya chrome silver and add a little paint chipping by hand with a, uh, with a little brush. Just trying to tell the story of some chipped paint here, being very specifically random about it. <laughs> That makes sense. Don't want to overdo one spot. I also want to kind of, I want it to make sense that this is an area that would get damaged a little bit. Like down here, wouldn't get scratched because it's protected. But up here, this area would totally get dinged a whole bunch. I want to add a, a pad to the back of this. I'll make it out of EVA foam because got a lot of it. So I'm going to make a pattern by putting a piece of masking tape on here and then tracing it. And I'm gonna go in a little bit, offset it just a tiny bit. I think I'll cut that out on the bandsaw. Put a little angle on this. Since this is a floor mat, it's got this texture and we're gonna keep that on there, but I do think I should soften these edges a little bit with the rotary tool. Since I'm gluing it down here, I'm just gonna sand a little bit of the paint off. There we go. One try. Nailed it. I think that does it. That's gonna finish it up. The paint's still a little tacky. Gotta let it dry. Uh, but this will be sent off to Ryan very soon to be used in their short film, of course, over at Film Riot. If you haven't subscribed to them, you really ought to. They have a bunch of tutorials on filmmaking, a bunch of really great short films, many of which I made some props for. Uh, I dig this so much. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something you can apply to your own kit bashing project or your own painting project. Uh, and more importantly, it was just a heck of a lot of fun. That'll wrap it up for this build. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thanks to Ryan for reaching out for this project. Super fun. Uh, we'll have links to the video that they're using this in down below. Uh, if you haven't checked out our Extra Credit Club yet, you owe it to yourself to uh, check the links down below. Uh, we have uh, Patreon and uh, memberships right here on YouTube where you can join, get access to behind the scenes vlogs every week and shop projects. And like I said, mm -hmm. I also made this little drone for the short film for the Film Riot folks, and that was a video uh, on our Extra Credit Club. So thank you so much for those of you who support what we do. You keep the lights on around here. You keep our cats fed. We appreciate it. Please keep it up. And that'll do it for me in the shop today. Thanks for watching and happy crafting. Sand scuffing on it, but also when it comes time to paint, we'll leave that right on there and it won't get any paint.
Go back there. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so much snot just came out of my nose. <laughs> <Aww. Gross. laughs>